to park or not to park? That is the question. Should you buy parking in today's world in Toronto or not? That is the question. There's a TTC, King Street, there's the condo. Should you buy parking? 504 King. So, Yossi Kaplan here, Toronto Realtor Mortgage Broker. Today I'm going to talk to you about should you buy parking when you invest in Toronto condo. So, here's how it goes. In the old days, <laughs> 10 years ago, in the old days, um, yeah, you could always get parking, it wasn't a big deal. And then, you know, parking was like $10,000, $15,000, whatever. And, but the units were also, you know, not that much. And if you look at the ratio of how much the parking costs to the unit, is about 5 to 10% of the unit cost. So if your unit is uh, 500,000 at the time, and that'll probably get you like a nice, you know, if you're paying uh, 300 bucks a foot then, or 350 a foot, you get like a 750 square feet, two bedroom, two bed, two uh, bath, and then add parking, and the parking will cost, you know, 15, 20, 25, okay? And slowly but surely, uh, price of parking start going up and up and up and up and people are getting stressed about parking and if you buy a small unit you cannot get parking so first it was like units under 700 foot, uh, square feet can get parking two bedroom units and more get parking and some buildings uh, like the RC uh, RCMI in uh, in um, on university doesn't even have parking the city of Toronto approved it which big mistake in my opinion and some buildings on King, all the Fried buildings on King, they do not have guest parking at all. You know, there used to be like lots of guest parking in the city of Toronto had this kind of uh, how many parking spots you need per unit. They calculate this some kind of a convoluted formula. Um, but you know, there's no guest parking in the Thompson, the old one, the new one, um, Fashion House. They don't have guest parking. They have pay parking that developer owns. So after the developer finishes the building and sells everyone the unit and the parking, they retain, they basically give no guest parking and they retain, so if someone is coming to visit you from out of town, they have to pay for parking if it's even available. I don't like that. That's uh, obviously extra income for long term for the developer. So the developer has a building, sits there for 20 years. And they basically uh, give no guest parking and then they lease the entire, say, first and second uh, P1, P2, first and second floors on the ground to a parking company. They pay him whatever and then floors three, four, and five, way, way deep, that's where you get your parking. So if you wanna uh, bring your car in, you gotta like go down and down and down. And it's, and you know, and the other problem is of course that the parking lot location is like who gets which, which, uh, which uh, parking suite. In my opinion, the person who paid the most should get the best parking spot, which is, you know, near the elevator on the first floor of the parking. And the person, they, bu they bought the cheapest unit with no parking, uh, with the parking, the cheapest one with parking, uh, we'll get the very bottom one at the very back, okay? But it's not always like that, and the sad uh, truth is that lawyers actually divide the allocation of of the parking. It's not even in control, which is really bad because, you know, if you're going to spend $100,000 on parking, you better get a really good spot, right? Well, not always like that. So should you buy the parking? So here's the thing. Um, everything's changing, the world's changing, society is changing, and we don't really need cars anymore, so... I used to have two cars, fine parking, uh, one with the unit and second rent from a neighbor or whatever. Uh, sometimes I had, you know, friends gave me parking, whatever. I always find parking, but now it's just impossible. I got rid of those cars and I have Uber and I have a uh, car share and I have a bicycle and I walk and I use a TTC and I jump on a cab, get a ride. But, you know, there's, there's really no point of like living on King Street or Liberty Village and having a car unless you need to drive and that just, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> or I'm happy for me that don't have to have uh, driving downtown anymore. I love driving, but it just, just that's, not, that's not fun. So uh, I got no more car and a long time ago, a uh, uh, account in front of mine said, you know what, you should look at how much the parking costs you and then what would it cost you to uh, drive uh, taxis. He says, even if it costs you $3,000 a month, you may be able to write it off, you'd be better off. I never thought about it this way, but I, I, I started looking at it this way, and guess what? Uh, the accountant buddy was right. There's another public transport for you. Now, public transport in Toronto is a huge problem. Every generation of politicians, mayors, you know, public, uh, uh, what do they call transfer planners, all that stuff, they just like come up with these big, grandiose plans that, of, of course, nothing ever actually works, and parking is a mess, and traffic is a mess. 
So uh, let's look at that numbers, okay? So I'm gonna do this in my head, but you can follow up, just get a calculator and do it. There's another one, other side, go to the destiny or something. Um, so let's say, so you know, you buy parking, I don't know if you can get parking for 50 grand anymore, maybe like you buy from the neighbor, but uh, for new development, a lot of the parking, like 60, 70, 80, $100,000, you know, I, uh, 55C, which is 55 Charles, beautiful building, by the way, we have units. Uh, and it, that's a nice building, but still quite expensive, a million bucks for two bedroom. And the parking is 100,000 for the VIP, and it's uh, 125,000 if, if uh, you miss the VIP, you buy it later. So that's 100 grand for your parking. Okay, so let's say for investment wise, if I spend 100 grand on the parking, I gotta pay mortgage on that parking, right? A 20% goes to, so 20,000, 20%, I have to pay my uh, installments, five, 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 and five. In this case, really easy to calculate, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, and 5,000 on closing, right? That gives you my 15 plus five percent. In this case, it's also true for the numbers, for the thousands. And then, of course, I have uh, condo fees, maintenance to pay on the parking, and you gotta pay uh, municipal tax on your purchase and the parking goes part of your purchase and land transfer tax you got to pay on top of that uh, when you buy it uh, and that's it so you paid a hundred thousand dollar for the parking you basically sign it up twenty thousand you put in your installments and your deposits and then eighty thousand into mortgage so that alone you know costs you eighty thousand to mortgage costs you like three hundred to three hundred fifty dollars a month and then the carrying cost the um the maintenance fees on parking will cost you say about 50 or 80 bucks a month. So that's bringing you to $400 a month. Uh, there's also uh, municipal tax, 1%. So even it's just, you know, a hundred bucks a month, whatever, but it's uh, uh, 50 bucks a month for the parking. You're looking at about 500 bucks a month to own a parking spot now that you paid a hundred thousand dollars for. 500 bucks a month, that includes the mortgage on the parking. Okay, that includes the mortgage on the parking. Uh, without the mortgage on the parking, if you pay the cash, you pay the 100,000 cash, uh, you're just paying the condo fees and the taxes on, on the unit and part of it is the parking, right? So the parking may be 5 or 10%, but it's still a bit, a bit of amount if you want to see what, it, what, what, it's, what it, it really is. So you're really looking at about, say, 100 to 200 bucks uh, a month uh, just carrying costs on the parking plus the mortgage and the parking if you have any. So that could be three, four, and five hundred dollars a month for that parking. Now if you got a fancy car, you're driving a hundred thousand dollar car, you make the money, who cares, right? It's fine. Um, but if you if you're just like me and you're just like, you know, you you gotta you gotta uh, pay attention to your shekels, to your dollars, uh, you gotta think about it. Now if you could rent parking for two hundred bucks say three hundred bucks a month from a neighbor, which is which is typical. 250, 300 bucks a month, you can find a parking spot downtown these days from a neighbor um, that don't have, they have the parking spot, you know, without cover. Well, that more or less covers their cost, but here's the thing. If you're running a business from home, ask your accountant, maybe you'll be able to write off uh, that parking spot or a portion of it. So maybe you're going to be better off actually renting that parking spot um, instead of adding it to your mortgage. The other thing is, could you get the value of that parking out when you sell the unit? So again, that's, that's uh, you know, if, if, if uh, everything goes the way it is and everything keeps going up and up and up, sure you'll get it because it really just adds to the amount of the unit. And as we see on, on units which are sold, uh, you know, there's definitely, if you see one unit without the parking and one unit with, and you look at the MLS on the solds, uh, you'll definitely see a difference in the price, and that's, that's the estimated value of the parking. Uh, so I'm reverse engineering this. I'm taking, what did it cost, uh, say, for that two-bedroom unit in that building with the parking? And then what did it cost for a similar unit in the same building without the parking? And look at the difference. And bear in mind, all, all is equal, more or less. Uh, the difference will be the cost of the parking, okay? Um, what we see usually is the cost of the parking shrinks a bit uh, on a resale. What does that mean? That means that the, the price you pay for the developer of the parking is maybe more than you'll get it back on the backside when you sold your unit. Now that's not, a, that's not like 100% math because the, the perceived value is really what you're paying for and if you're willing to pay 100 grand for the parking spot that you agree to perceive value of 100 grand of course you'll try to get it back uh, but you i i can't guarantee you'll get it back exactly but i can guarantee you won't get more either you know it's a fluid thing 
Um, if your unit is really, I'll tell you this, if, if you're buying a really cool unit, you're buying a penthouse, you're buying something really unique, uh, a large unit, something that is like a serious investment, get the parking, get two spots, because that eventually the person that will buy the unit from you will have just the same expectations, okay? And, if you, and I used to tell people, you know, don't bother with a bunk bedroom because your renter not going to have a car anyways, that's what they're renting. And if you buy the two bedroom, you probably want to get the one parking spot. Why? Because if you have renters, maybe it's a, a couple, so they'll share a car, or maybe it's two roommate situation and one will have a car, or you can just rent it out and more or less break even on the parking spot and hope that you can make it back when you sell it. Okay? But parking itself is an upfront expense to the investor that you may not always want to take that expense. And the other thing is, well, let me explain this for a second. What does it mean upfront expense? Because the parking I had to pay, you know, 50 or 80 or $100,000 for, and 20% of that I have to pay upfront. That means uh, 10,000 on a 50,000 or 20,000 on a 100,000, and the rest is mortgage. And I get to pay uh, maintenance fees on it, and I'm gonna pay uh, municipal taxes on it by way of paying municipal taxes on my unit, but part of it is the parking. Now the, the, the cost of my unit is higher, so my taxes will be, will be higher a little bit, right? Taxes in Toronto is about 1% of the purchase price divided by 12. Sometimes it's a little less as 0 0.8 or 0 0.9, but it's around there. But the other thing is really important is, you know, the amount of cars on the road is actually about to decrease. Yeah, you heard it here first. Um, all these cars you see on the road, and you know, this is King Street, there's not a lot of cars on the road because, because of the King Street rules. Um, and for those who don't know King Street, uh, you cannot cross King Street with your private car anymore. You have to exit on the first, uh, the first one. The cops are not here today, but they're giving tickets at $110 if, if you break these rules. And then uh, supposedly we get uh, better traffic. Well, I like it because I live here, but if you don't live downtown, you probably hate it when you got to come down to the city. But that's the whole point. It's like you're going to bring your car from outside the city, even from another neighborhood, where are you going to park? So if you're lucky, you're going to park in one of these uh, parking lots here, uh, these buildings that have no guest parking. You're going to go visit someone or go to Lavelle. You're going to park. <laughs> you, you basically use their restaurants, use their parking. That's, that's, that's the package deal. Uh, but otherwise, it's a problem. So, but the amount of cars on the road is about to erode. <laughs> uh, it's going to have a lot less. And the reason there's going to be a lot less cars on the road is because, we, because, because the Uber and the Lyft and all the share economy and share gig stuff is really making a difference. And what do I mean? I mean, you know, anyone that's today uh, a teenager or younger, probably not going to be driving. Very few of them. You know, in my generation, everyone, everyone drives. I don't know any one of my friends that do not drive. They may not have a car, but they have a, they have a valid driver's license. Okay? Everyone does. But the younger the generation, a lot of them don't even bother with the with a driver's license because they don't need to. Um, they live downtown, they use bicycle, public transport, Uber, Lyft, taxi, whatever, they walk. Um, but they don't need a car, they don't, they don't see it and they don't want to be the insurance and you know, the car scam, the insurance and the parts and the taxes and you know, when you buy a used car, you gotta pay HST on it, although it's already been paid. Like the whole car thing is, is, is crazy. So once we get those electric cars, and, they're gonna, and some, some of you are going to get it really flip here, but I'm sorry, that's how it's going to be. Uh, once we get those electric cars and they all drive themselves and you think it's 20 years ahead, it's not. It's probably a handful of years coming. And yes, they crash a little bit, but so do regular cars and they'll crash less and less and less until they won't crash at all. Okay, so once, once we get these cars, basically the Uber will come, it'll be like a pod a pod with wheels is going to come, pick you up, the door will slide open, you sit in there, it takes you where you got to go, maybe there's some other passengers in it, maybe not, and then it drops off, drops you off, drops off the next passenger, it just keeps going, the robot just keeps driving around and dropping people off. So picking up, dropping off, picking up, dropping off, and you know, the AI, the software will be smart enough to optimize it. And each of these cars, let's say, can take 10 cars off the road, okay? So if I put uh, 10,000 of these uh, auto, auto electric cars that just silently glide around, and pick people and drop them off for a few dollars, why would you have a car? And suddenly you won't see any more cars, you just won't need them, okay? Even deliveries will be done, everything's gonna be automated. The thing will just show up, um, 
you know, the restaurant owner will come out, grab the box with the produce for the day, and the robot will drive away to the next restaurant. And then the robot will, you know, a different kind of machine, vehicle, will come and uh, they'll be for passengers, and one will be for packages, and one will be for this, and one will be for that. And the whole thing will be automated and silent, just right around. No one's gonna, uh, <laughs> no one's gonna fight on the road. There won't be any road rage. It's gonna be very silent and, 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 and smooth and you just won't need cars anymore and you know it's not going to happen overnight but it will happen little by little uh, i'm sure that uber has already scanned toronto and mapped it all kinds of ways and google and all the auto companies and the reason they do it is so can they start putting their fleets of automated vehicles on the road the moment you have so many automated vehicles on the road people don't need to buy cars anymore and we don't need to buy cars anymore what are you going to do with this hundred thousand dollar parking spot you're going to turn it into a locker, right? You can't live there. Um, and also to fit them with electric, to charge your Teslas and all that. That's just, you know, the condo boards are so slow. And the expense and who's going to do it. Ah. People are just going to desert. Look at this parking lot. This, all these parking lots are going to be gone. Okay, you won't need it. You won't need it. Most of these people are driving you know, a short distance. And if they don't, they should be able to jump on a, on a rail system and come to Toronto. Now, obviously... We are light years ahead from any reasonable public transportation. Toronto is the largest American city with the worst public transportation in the world. I don't know any other North American city that has public transportation as bad as we do. You know, I've, I've traveled a lot and I never really lived in the States, but I spent a bit of time in all the major cities. And, you know, New York is an amazing public transport. Seattle at the time, I was there years ago, uh, you could actually jump on like... Uh, it was like an electric bus uh, through a tunnel downtown and between 7 a.m. and 7 uh, p.m. it was all free, you just jump. So, you know, the guys who work at Amazon, they jump into the system and they pop up at some food court and they have their lunch and they pop up to the office and that's what everyone did. I don't know how, it's, anyway, how it is like that anymore, but public transport downtown should be completely free, of course. Okay? And then we can move people around, get more business, and actually we're going to get a lot more money this way. Okay? Public transport, free, Wi-Fi, free, everything. And then any city that you see, free Wi-Fi. Uh, and some of them are getting free public transport with the new automated vehicles. They're just, they're just booming, absolutely booming. Everyone's making crazy money. Everyone's, everyone's doing great. So it's, it's, uh, it may be an expense up front, but uh, the pickup at the back is amazing. But, you know, the parking, the thing is you're going to buy the $100,000 parking. In five years or ten years, it'll be worth half. And then another half, and then nobody even going to need it. So now you can get yourself a very fancy locker, but now you're going to go to your condo board and fight with the condo board, and they don't believe in it, and da da da. Ah, you got to change the rules, and then changing the rules in the condos, you need the quorum, 66 percent. It's complicated. So uh, I used to tell people, buy the parking with the two bedroom, buy the parking with the expensive units. Well, buy the parking with the very nice units. But if you're buying an, a renter, even a two-bedroom, a small two-bedroom, I don't know anymore if the parking is really worth it because you're probably not going to make any money on it. Now, every case to its own, of course, and if, you want, if you're want, if you thinking of buying or looking at buying something and you want to ask me, if, should you buy the parking or just give me a shout, I'll be happy to talk to you. It's not a problem, but I'm telling you, parking is a thing of the past. Cars is a thing of the past. Uh, things are changing. Real estate you know, moves in phases, so 10 years in real estate is not that much, really. It's quick. So think about it, 10 years ago, 10 years from now, I think we'll see a lot of cars on the road. Those parking may be worth a lot less than what they are now. It's gonna be interesting, that's it.